Well, it's hard to miss graffiti covering everything from buildings to bridges to street signs, and it seems to be popping up more often. Minneapolis has received more than 3,700 reports of graffiti so far this year. That's twice as many as the same time frame back in 2019. WCCO's Aaron Hassanzada found out leaving their mark comes at a cost. It's up for interpretation. Graffiti, art, both, neither. Some say it depends on what it is. I don't see the point of tagging like your name on something. The stuff on the trash can looks pretty stupid. Something that's maybe more pleasing to look at or has a message that other people can interpret. Uh, that would be considered art in my opinion. What's not up for interpretation is that the state and cities spend time and money covering it up or cleaning it off. Take MnDOT, for instance. From 2018 to 2020, it painted over or removed more than 2,500 tags in the Twin Cities, giving priority to vulgar, racist, or offensive displays. We tracked it back three years. Of, it's cost us about $100,000 in paint. Just like St. Paul or MnDOT, the Minneapolis program is report based, so someone needs to call 311 for a crew to come out and clean things up. And that endeavor isn't cheap. The city of Minneapolis says its 2021 budget to handle the graffiti is roughly $700,000. I believe it. In St. Paul, graffiti was consistently one of the top 10 complaints in 2020, but it was eighth behind things like tall grass and parking. And if it appears to be art or a mural that's not offensive, the city says property owners can decide if they want to keep it up. I guess it depends like where and what it is. Who decides what's worth keeping up and what's not. In Minneapolis, Aaron Hassanzada, WCCO 4 News. We have information on how to report graffiti in the Twin Cities and on state highways on our website. Private property owners in the Twin Cities do have to cover the cost of removal.